Hello, my name is Richard Weitz. I'm a senior fellow and director of the Center for Political Military Analysis here at the Hudson Institute. I'm here today, uh, August 25th, to talk about the uh, Defense Department's most recent report on Chinese military power that came out last week. Uh, we've now had time to see the Chinese reaction and think about the, the contents of the report. I think one of the most interesting uh, differences between this year's version and previous ones is the stress on the desire to develop a military-to-military -military relationship with the, the Chinese. Um, now, this is a long-standing U.S. policy for the past decade and a half. Uh, we've been trying to engage with the Chinese military, and there have been some uh, successes. We've managed to establish uh, exchanges of port visits, uh, we've had a few joint exercises, and meetings of defense officials and visits of senior people. However, this relationship is fundamentally troubled. Uh, the main problem is whenever the Chinese government is angry about something the United States does, particularly selling weapons to Taiwan, they uh, will freeze the exchanges. And so we've seen this now uh, happen several times in the last few years. Uh, more generally, the, the relationship is just not really developed the way both sides, have, at least the U.S. side, has wanted. Uh, it's been very constrained and uh, limited compared to the robust relationship the United States has with other militaries, and occasionally the Chinese as well. Uh, they've developed some good ties with other countries' militaries. I think the reason, fundamental reason is just difference of political objectives and values. There's just an underlying tension between the United States and the People's Republic of China over what should be U.S. policy towards Taiwan, particularly whether the United States should sell weapons to Taiwan. But beyond that obvious point, there's also just a difference of strategic culture. The, the Chinese, um, and in some ways explainable as the weaker military power, are, are reluctant to be more transparent and open about their military activities. They, were, they see this, uh, they want to inspire and make sure that we have a certain amount of uncertainty about what they might do and their capabilities because they think it enhances deterrence. Um, also, there's a desire on the Chinese part not to let other countries uh, know the extent of their military buildup, I believe, so they, they're not trying to advertise their capabilities. Um, there's problems with civil military relations. Uh, the, uh, often the military uh, leaders are reluctant to become too close to the U.S. colleagues for fear that their civilian communist overseers will uh, use that against them, perhaps in promotions and so on. But I could see why this has become a, an, an important issue for the uh, Defense Department, because as we've seen in the report, uh, the Chinese military is extensively expanding its ability to operate in the global level. And we saw this last year with the Chinese decision to send fleet and, uh, and to deal with the Somali pirates to join the international maritime patrols there. So this is going to be more and more of a source of problems. It is expected the Chinese develop an aircraft carrier. If they continue to demand sovereignty over international waters in the South China Sea and the East China Sea and so on, so it's something we're going to need to, to struggle with. How do you deal, develop a defense relationship with another country when they have a strong culture and incentives to avoid it? Thank you so much.